For this problem, we need to find the zeros, the multiplicity, whether it crosses or touches, and then we're going to use all this information to uh, graph. So the first thing is we want to find the zeros. And the zeros are the x-intercepts. It's basically what makes each individual part here equal to zero. So you can imagine just setting each of these equal to zero to get the answer. The answer is going to end up just being the opposite sign of what you see for these two. And then if you just have a single X, if you just set that equal to zero, then you're going to get zero for the answer. Now, the other ones are going to be the opposite sign. So this was minus five, and we see this is plus five. We have a plus three, and that's going to be a minus three. So you're just going to do the opposite sign of these. But essentially, all you're doing is you're just setting each one individually equal to zero. Now, the multiplicity are the powers that are attached to each of these factored pieces. So in this case, all of these are raised to the power of one, which means that for each of these, the multiplicity is one. We have to determine whether it crosses or touches. So if the multiplicity is odd, it's going to cross. And if the multiplicity is even, it's going to touch. So since all of these are odd numbers, that means that each of these, it's going to cross. So the graph will cross at zero, cross at five, it'll cross at negative three. This one down here, it says the graph behaves like blank for large values of X. What you're gonna do is we're going to look at what the leading term is. In other words, the term that has the highest power, that's gonna be the one that we're gonna use here. Now for this one, I'm going to multiply it out, but for future ones, future examples, we don't have to do this, but for this example, I will. So first of all, I'm going to multiply the last uh, two terms here. So I'm going to get X squared, and then I have a 3 and a minus 5. 3X minus 5X is going to be minus 2X, and then I have negative 5 times 3, negative 15. Then I'm going to multiply all this through by x and get x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x. The answer for this, the graph behaves like blank, that's going to be x cubed. It's just the leading term that you have there, and that's going to be your answer. So basically what this is saying is, what is the graph going to look like if I zoom really far out, what does the graph resemble? And it, we're going to say that it resembles X cubed. And that's kind of uh, has to do with the end behavior on this as well. It's going to have an end behavior that looks like X cubed. So now let's go ahead and graph this. Now we see that the graph crosses at zero. It crosses at five and at negative three. This is saying that the graph behaves like X cubed. Now the X cubed graph, what that does, here's what the normal X cubed graph looks like. It, it looks like this. So all I really care about is what the graph does on each of the ends because it's talking about what happens when X is very large. So we're looking at this end and that end. This is gonna tell me that the graph is actually gonna start by coming up from down below. So I'll start by drawing in something like this, I know that it's gonna be coming in from uh, down below. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna cross here because we already determined it crosses based on the multiplicity being odd. So I know that it's gonna cross here. Now it's gonna go up to a certain amount. Now I don't know how high it's gonna go up to. We don't have to do that with that much detail uh, because on a test, I'm just going to ask for a, just a general sketch. I'm just looking for the overall shape. So I know it's going to go up to a certain point. It's going to curve, and then it's going to come back down through here. So again, in order to get exactly how high this goes up to, you have to plot points or use calculus, which we're not doing in this class. We're just doing a quick sketch. And so it doesn't matter how high that actually goes up to. Uh, and then it's going to have to cross again through zero. So it crosses. Now, again, it's going to go down to a certain amount. I don't know how far down it's going to go, maybe down to here. It'll curve and then go back up through here. And it crosses once again because the multiplicity is odd uh, at five. 
And we see here that it, it has to keep going up like this because that's what the cube graph actually does. And so now we have an overall sketch of this graph.